Hi guys, Leo from MediaWay here. We've got a really exciting tutorial for you today. I've seen lots of tutorials for Bob Ross all over the internet recently, and I thought it was time we did one in Blender. This is a really great tutorial suitable for beginners and intermediate level. All the materials, models, and HDRIs are included with Blender Kit, so we can concentrate on the fun part of making a great Bob Ross landscape that looks like this. The beauty of this method is once we've built the scene, we can quickly swap out different HDRIs and give the scene a totally different mood with very little effort and it's great fun. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll do, if you go to Edit Preferences, you just need to make sure these add-ons are installed. If you just search for Blender Kit, make sure that's switched on and also the Ant Landscape tool, that needs to be switched on as well. Okay, now we're good to go. Press A to select all, X to delete, delete everything. N to bring up the sidebar here, and you can click on Blender Kit. Uh, I'm actually a full member of Blender Kit. It is really good and definitely worth paying for, but I'm just gonna log out for now just to show all these models are free and you can download them easily. So we just search by searching for a forest. And if you just check where it says search filters, if you put free first. And on the import settings, also make sure this is set to append. If you set the import method to link, it means you can't edit the models. Okay, so we've got a low poly forest, which we'll just pull in straight away here. Okay, so this is kind of a starting point. What we'll do, we'll just rotate this a little bit um, on the X axis. So we kind of just slightly got a slight slope for these trees. Um, we're going to add in a camera as well. Um, Shift A to add the camera. And we're gonna put it just above the trees, just somewhere around here for now. So you press, once you've got the viewport in roughly the right place, if you press Control Alt Zero, that puts the, the camera there. And by pressing Shift, and tilde, you can actually move the camera with the mouse and move it forward and backwards with WASD and also move it up and down with Q and E. And if it's moving too slow, you can hold down the shift key and that'll make it move even faster. We're just gonna close up the Blender Kit panel so it doesn't get in the way. Um, and let's add a landscape. Shift A, Mesh, Landscape. Um, you can toggle this up and down just with the little arrow key there if you don't see it. Um, if you do a preset for Mountain 1, uh, we're gonna add the subdivisions, a few more subdivisions. We'll do 512 by 512. And we'll just set the noise type, just change that to noise rocks. Right, you'll see up here, there's a landscape. We can't see it at the minute because it's hidden in the trees. So if you press S and then type 160, as in 160, you'll see we've got beautiful giant mountain. Seven for top view, we're just gonna grab it, move it over there, and we'll add in another mountain as well, similar settings, add mesh, landscape, and all we're gonna do, we're just gonna change this, the random seed just so it looks different, it could be any number you like, and just press okay, or click off it really. Same principle, select it up there in the bar, landscape 02, scale, S, 160, I've got a bit bigger landscape. I'm just gonna move that one somewhere over there. And what we'll do, we'll duplicate this, Shift D. And we'll, in fact, we'll move this one over this side. Grab, G to grab. And we'll, do, we'll rotate it. If you hold down the control key, it constrains to five degree increments. And we'll duplicate this one, Shift D, somewhere around there, and again we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll do it one more time, Shift D, and we'll pop it at the back there. Okay. So the other thing you'll notice now is the viewport is clipping, which means the draw distance from your, basically where you're looking, is set to not far enough. So if you go to your settings up here where it says view, you'll see the clip start and end. We'll just set the end to 2000 meters. That should be fine for this project. Okay, 
So if we just go back to our camera view by pressing zero, we can start to see we've got the basics of a landscape appearing here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add some water. So shift right click in the middle, shift A to add a plane. We're just gonna scale it up back, let's scale it. Just scale it up till it's sort of big enough. Then seven for top view. I'm gonna scale along the Y axis. Until it more or less goes, covers more or less everything we're going to see. Just going to press G to grab it, just going to move it forward slightly, about there. Okay. Now we're going to lift the trees up a bit. Let's press three for side view. In fact, if you press Control three to get the side view from the other side, uh, we're just going to select the tree mesh. G to grab Z to move up on the Z axis. So we've sort of got the trees coming down to the water's edge. If you haven't saved it yet, which I haven't, press F, con, Control S and click Save. Not for camera view. We're just gonna tweak the camera a little bit just to get a little bit closer. So select your camera, Shift tilde, dup, uh, E to move up. And we're just gonna tweak the view just so it kind of keeps all the mountains in view, about like that. Okay, next thing we're going to do, let's make some, let's start adding some materials in. So first thing we'll do, we'll add some water. So back to Blender Kit on the right. This time click on materials, search to type in water. Press enter. Uh, we're gonna go for this one called turquoise water. So just click and drag, drop it on the water there. The next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna move, select all the mountains by holding down shift and clicking, then press Control J, that joins them into one mesh. Press G to grab, Z to move on the Z axis, and we're just gonna push them down a little bit so we can see some of the water. In fact, we we'll switch to this view, you can start to see where we're at. Let's add a material to the mountains next. So if you go to this shading tab, click new, and we call it mountain. Press the zero key on the number pad to see your camera view. Roll, use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out of this. We're going to add a color ramp, shift A, search for a color ramp. And connect color to base color. Shift A again, we're gonna search for a separate RGB node. Drop that there, connect the B output to the factor. And we're going to do one more thing, Shift A, search for a bump node, pop that there, pop the normal into the image. Okay, so now we can actually control the snow on the mountains using this slider. So the left slider, the black slider controls how much, I guess, rock is exposed and the white slider controls how sharp the gradient is between the rock and the snow. So just kind of adjust these until you're happy with the amount of rock and snow you've got. Something like that'll do for now. The next thing I'm going to do is add some trees to the mountains. So let's just pop back into layout view. So if you select the mountains first, then shift and select, shift and click on the trees. Control L and then copy modifiers. This basically copies the modifiers from the trees onto the mountains mesh. Now, at the minute, obviously all the trees are scattered everywhere all over the mountain mesh, which is not what we want. So if you go to the particle settings, and then just click on here on this number two, this makes a copy of it. So this can be called mountain trees. And what we're going to do, we're actually going to paint the trees where we want them to be. So if you pop back into camera view by pressing zero, and we're going to swap from object mode into weight paint mode. Now you can see we've got a little cursor here. You can rescale this by pressing F and moving your mouse up and down. I think we're gonna leave it about there. And just simply click and drag your mouse to weight paint all around the water's edge here. 
It doesn't matter, you don't need to be too precise. Just something like this will be perfect. So the weight paint controls the density of particles. We're gonna, you're going to see that in a minute. So where the red is means there's going to be the most trees and then you see it sort of fades out sort of a gradient from green to blue. In fact, let's just take the weight down and we'll make the brush a little bit bigger and we're going to paint a little bit of green around. So this part means there will still be trees there but not as many as in the red parts. We'll have some more trees down here. So now we've done the weight paint, we need to tell Blender that we want the trees to appear on the weight paint. So hop back into object mode, and in your particle settings, scroll down to vertex groups, and where it says density, you'll see we've got a new group created that's from the weight paint that we've just done. A Couple other things we want to change. If you go to render where it says scale, these trees are a bit too big, I'm gonna half that, so that's gonna be 0.12. And where it says rotation, currently they're coming, the trees are being rotated by the normal from the mountain, so they're a bit bendy in some places. So if we, instead we set the orientation to the global Z, it should all point up nice and straight now. Uh, and we'll add just a touch of random in there just to give them a little bit of variation, make it a little bit more natural. And you can also adjust the number of particles up here, the number of trees, so let's change that to 1500. Okay, starting to look good now. Save again if you haven't recently. We're going to add a HDRI now to light it. So if you click on HDRI, I've already found one that's suitable. If you type in furry, there's this asset called Furry Clouds. We we'll just click on that. Uh, this is the resolution um, of the imported HDRI. 4096 should be fine for this. Press OK. I'm just going to hop into render settings. We're going to change it from EV to cycles. Change that to GPU compute. Now I'm using K cycles, which I really recommend because it is at least twice as fast as regular cycles. But um, you can set up uh, cycles in a similar manner. But for this, I'm just going to click on faster viewport updates, ultra denoiser, and change the samples from 128 to 32 to make it a bit faster. Let's do a quick render. Okay, so we can see a problem. Obviously, we've got some buildings from the HDRI in the background. We'll solve that in a second. Um, let's do that first. So click on your world settings. Uh, click the little drop down where it says color. And then click on where it says vector mapping. Let's just change the view to cycles view. And we're going to change the rotation of the HDRI. Just spin it around a bit just so we can't see those. Let's just keep going a bit further. Let's get around somewhere like that. I'm just gonna add another landscape in the background, another mountain in the background. Uh, we'll leave the settings as they are. Press S, 160, scale it, and we'll shift and click the other mountains. Press Control L and we'll link the materials just to save us a job. Press seven for top view. And I'm gonna move that mountain into the background. We're also gonna to have to change the camera settings because the camera can't see far enough. So click on the camera and change the clip end to 2000. So now we can see again. So I'm just gonna scale that mountain a little bit bigger. Yeah, and we'll leave it like that. I think we'll rotate it on the Z. And just grab it move it around there somewhere. I'm going to shift right click on the sit the water. We're going to add in a little boat. So I click model and type in boat. And we'll add this little boat in. Right click on the boat and click select hierarchy. Press full stop on the number pad. Uh, we're going to scale this up. Press S25. We'll scale it 20 times up. Zoom out a bit. Just G to grab, Z to move down, and we're just gonna drop it so it's in the water. Just notice the reflections on this are not quite right. So press, click on your water, press Control A, and then apply all transforms. That's better, we can see the water a bit better now. 
Select your hierarchy of your boat, and we're just gonna press G to grab it. Shift Z stops it moving on the Z axis. And then we're gonna press R to rotate and Z to rotate on the Z axis so we can see it. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here and we're gonna add some little Bob Ross like trees into the view. So if you see from the forest uh, sort of plane, we've also got the spare trees on the left or on the right, wherever, however you've placed it. Um, are we going to pinch? I think we're gonna pinch two of these. Yeah, those two, uh, maybe that one and that one. Uh, seven for top view. I'm gonna just grab them, pop them just in front of the camera. Three for side view, grab, move them up so you can see them in front of the camera. Nought for camera view. We're gonna grab the fir tree first, G to grab. We're just gonna move him somewhere off to the side and the other tree, zero for camera view, we're just going to grab that, G to grab. Just grab it, move it, just somewhere that looks pleasing to you. G grab, Z, let's just, let's just have it out of frame a little bit. Starting to look like a Bob Ross now. Let's do a quick render, looking good. Now we're gonna add one more thing in to give a bit of extra realism. It's going to be a volume cube. So we are going to seven for top view, shift right click, back in the middle of your scene, shift A to add a cube, S 100. And we're gonna scale it a bit more and we're gonna scale it on the Y axis, something like that. Now for a material, we're gonna add a new material, but we don't want it to be a principal BSDF, so we're actually going to click remove on that. And where it says volume, we are going to add a principled volume shader. Now this basically acts like a mist or a fog on the scene. Um, the initial density is way too strong, so we're gonna try 0 0.001. And now you can maybe just see it a little bit. Let's have a look in the viewport. And now what we do, if we just look at the last render, F11, I'm gonna to go to slot two by pressing number two. We'll render again. Now we've got this beautiful haze just over the mountains. In fact, if you can, you can press one to go back to slot one. That was without the volume. And that's with the volume, just as that touch of beautiful realism onto the image. I'm just gonna experiment with the HDRI settings, just tweak them around a bit. So what I've done, I've just moved the HDR around a little bit. I've also tilted it on the X axis just so you can't see uh, the buildings behind. And this is what we're up to now. I've started to look really great. Just a couple more final little tweaks. If you click on the render properties icon, scroll down to color management, just change the look to medium high contrast. Just gives you a little bit of extra pop. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you really enjoyed that. I'd love to see your creations. So if you do anything cool, link to it in the description below. If you've got any questions or anything, drop me a link and I'll answer some of the questions below. I've also included the scene file below in the description so you can download that yourself and have a look what I've done if you get stuck. Like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.